the program uh, for today. Dr. Sharif Amir, the Professor of Geopolitical Affairs and the International Relations. Doctor, we were speaking just before the break and you said that it was not easy for Egypt to be maintaining mm. the foreign relations, especially at the times of uh, conflict for example, or at the times of the COVID-19, as we did witness in 2019 mm. and 2020, as uh, we did see over the past uh, three or four years. How do you think Egypt has managed to do that uh, specifically, to be maintaining uh, balanced relations, especially at times of conflicts? Well, I'll give you the example, for example, uh, the, the Israeli and uh, Arab-Israeli conflict, when always there was this clash violent clash between Gaza and Israel, mm -hmm. Hamas movement and uh, Israel. Uh, the Egyptian mediation was present immediately um, uh, with our intelligence service heading to Tel Aviv and heading to, uh, to, uh, to Gaza to maintain the ceasefires. And we, we m managed uh, with a huge success mm -hmm. to avoid uh, <coughs> bloodshed um, we have seen in, in previous years it, uh, uh, the war between both sides used to go on for months. Now, once it starts in 72 hours and the Egyptian mediation calms everything down. Yes. So this is a huge success mm -hmm. that no one, I think, is capable of doing it. Uh, because we have this balance that you said about. We have the contacts with the, uh, the Gaza, uh, people, we have the contacts with Israel, we have the contacts with uh, the Washington, Moscow, with everyone. And we had another obstacle, is that there were forces interfering inside this conflict, trying to ignite the conflict like mm -hmm. Iran, yes. supporting the Islamic Jihad. So at that time, we had to also convince the Palestinians that you have to listen to your own voice, not to other people's voice. Yes. When we call them to unite, it's the Arab voice. We're not mm -hmm. talking about e Egypt's voice only. We want them to be uh, secure, to be united. This one of the main issues that we have reached a huge success. Then we have seen how, how things went terribly wrong in Libya. Yes. And at that time, we maintained one line that we support Marshal, Field Marshal Khalifa Haftar at the time with the army, the national army. There were factions everywhere. Mm -hmm. At that time, when NATO bombed Libya, arms were in the hands of terrorist groups. Uh, there were uh, smuggling of uh, illegal immigrants, smuggling of the oil. It was a failed state. Mm -hmm. We were criticized by many people why we chose to support the army, in, in the, the, the national army. We said because this is the national army of the state. Yes. And now what Libya, it's fragile. And we're not saying that everything is beautiful there. It's very fragile now. But at least, at least, the civilians are not paying the price now. Maybe there are disputes between the factions, disputes between the politicians, but at the end, the people are just living in, in calm. Hmm. It has to be rebuilt again, Libya. And then we had the problem, of course, of, of Sudan, uh, with Omar al-Bashir, who was ousted. And then we had to gather all of them here in Egypt and convince them that they have to have the dialogue and the transition uh, period. And unfortunately, what happened again? Main, one of the main problems, we, as you mentioned, uh, the COVID-19. Yes. And uh, this was a huge um, blow up to every uh, country in the world, especially the developing countries who wanted to uh, go on with their economic uh, developments. Uh, at that time, um, Egypt was trying to guarantee the security, uh, the, 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 the sanitary and security of the people the health security of the people, and at the same time, keep the, the economy going on. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge. It was a huge challenge because we didn't know uh, how to do it immediately with the fatalities happening everywhere. Yes. And the world is closing. Europe closed its source. The West closed its source. China. And every country had to sustain its own um, um, ways of combating the pandemic we managed to survive. Many people thought that this would be the end of the economy, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. And then we have now the Ukrainian-Russian uh, conflict. Yes. Uh, 
um, it has numerous uh, um, challenges, the gas, the grains, mm -hmm. uh, the geopolitical situation in, the, in, the, uh, in this region, um, the energy crisis and how the, 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 the Gulf states decided not to listen to Washington for the first time in decades, mm -hmm. which changed the whole regime. Now that we, we are facing a new map, we have a new possibilities of alliances with China, with Russia, um, countries like uh, Egypt and, and uh, Arab countries wish to join the BRICS. Uh, and lately Iran joined the Shanghai uh, uh, Commission. So we yes. have, w w the world is changing. How could a country like Egypt maintain all this balance? Uh, it's very difficult, especially that you have the Suez Canal, you have the access also in the Mediterranean, in the Red Sea. Um, you have to ensure your own security at Bab el Mandab uh, Street. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, uh, the whole geopolitical challenge is very serious. That's why we are maintaining our uh, defense security, defense policies strong to defend uh, our interest. Uh, and doctor, more recently and uh, more specifically, you mm -hmm. mentioned the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Mm -hmm. An African delegation headed there with a representation of uh, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli um, uh, on behalf of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Hassisi heading to Ukraine trying to find mm -hmm. uh, a solution as well. What does this say about the weight of Egypt in Africa and for the globe in global conflicts as we can see? Well, it didn't only start by that. Yes. It started also by the visit of the Polish President Duda, who came to Egypt and mm. tried to um, uh, urge Egypt to take uh, the side, uh, anti-Russian side. So that means that even countries like Poland and even countries in the Western Bloc wanted to have Egypt uh, position in their Under side. side yes. uh, so uh, um, uh, Egypt was very clear from day one of the conflict, we want peace, we want uh, negotiations, we urge all these peace initiatives. That's why uh, Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli was sent by President Sisi to Moscow and then to Kiev, um, hopefully to find a solution. But unfortunately, we all know that there are some forces, superpowers, who do not wish to see this happening. Mm. And uh, they are fueling, uh, in a way or another, the, the conflict. Um, so I think that uh, uh, we didn't lose hope because we all know on the long term everyone will pay the price. It will not all, uh, only be Ukraine or Russia or the United States or everyone. We will pay the price economically and strategically and we cannot uh, handle that. We have to f find a, a peace and a way to find uh, the end of this war. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other hand, uh, another important topic, uh, which is the refugees. Millions of refugees are located here in Egypt, and more specifically from uh, Sudan. For example, about 110,000 Sudanese refugees or citizens have crossed from Sudan into Egypt after the recent conflict uh, back there. How do you see uh, this uh, important file and how Egypt has responded to the situation that we have uh, right now is that we have millions of refugees on Egyptian soil? Well, uh, it's a huge, huge challenge because we all know that uh, the country uh, pays, um, th these people live with us yes. and uh, uh, with all the Egyptians. So um, they, they have to be uh, sustained by the state. Um, what is really difficult is that um, when we had, for example, the Syrian refugees, uh, now the Syrian conflict is being resolved. Um, you have countries like, uh, like Turkey, they're using violent methods mm. to push them back. Although they were supporting the, the, the Turkish regime and they were friends, but now they're telling them economically, we cannot afford to, to, mm. to host you, you have to go back immediately. And there are some racist and nationalistic chauvinist acts against them. That's not the case in Egypt at, at all. Yes. We have the Syrians and the Sudanese and Ethiopians and Iraqis and Yemen Yemenis, and we put aside all national sentiments, all economic difficulties. 
We never told them, you have to go back. If not, you will pay a heavy price here. You won't live in security as other countries did. Yes. We never bargained the West was this card. We never told them, the black, blackmail them, telling them, well, we will let all these people take boats and go to you uh, if you will not pay us. Mm -hmm. Turkey did that at a certain time. Yes. So I think that uh, we are having this burden silently because this is our tradition. Egypt wants to have good relations with all these countries. If we host the people of these countries, afterwards they will always have good memories. They will say we will be treated here. Many of them will say we grow up in Egypt, yes. not harassed, not beaten, not imprisoned, but we grow up in this secure environment. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think uh, the conflict in Sudan could be negatively impact, uh, impacting uh, the talks regarding uh, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam between Egypt, Sudan and Ethiopia? Well, it, uh, it already harmed the talks mm. because we have seen, unfortunately, the Ethiopian government from day one, they started saying, and emphasizing, of, of course, is the Ethiopian government. The people, they are living here in Egypt in peace, and we have no problems with, with them. We have no problems with, with the economic development of Ethiopia. We have only problems about our sovereignty, about the water, mm -hmm. according to the international law. Yes. So I think that uh, when they decided the, the, to stop the talks, because the, the, there is no solution in Sudan, of course, it was an, a pretext, an excuse, mm. to not to go on with uh, these kind of uh, uh, mediations and talks. Um, I, I think that um, at a certain time, Egypt will uh, give a, a red light to mm. everyone in the international community that we will not let the Ethiopian government use the cover of this conflict to harm our uh, 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 water uh, uh, interests and water sovereignty. We would not let it happen. Um, many, things, many think that it's always the military options. No, we never said so. We are just mm -hmm. saying that we will defend our security and our sovereignty and we know how to do it. Egypt has multiple choices. We can use them anyone, uh, any, any time, any time we want. Yes, uh, Doctor, heading uh, to the second uh, report of the daily debate for tonight, which comes uh, from the bilateral relations between Egypt and the European Union, decades of uh, cooperation and uh, partnership. More details in the upcoming report, so stay tuned. Egypt and Europe are bound by history and geography. The European Union and Egypt both have a long-lasting relationship and will continue to expand cooperation on basis of partnership and joint commitment. Egypt and Europe are working on an ambitious and innovative new agenda based on the conviction that by working together and in a spirit of partnership, common challenges can be turned into opportunities. On a bilateral level, the jointly agreed partnership priorities aim to address common challenges to promote joint interests and guarantee long-term stability on the two sides of the Mediterranean. The partnership priorities are guided by shared commitment to the universal values and to reinforce cooperation in support of Egypt's Sustainable Development Strategy Vision 2030. This partnership includes support to Egypt's sustainable economic and social development, good governance, the rule of law, human rights, migration, security, counter-terrorism, and cooperation in foreign policy through intensified consultations on regional and international issues. Egypt and the EU have been moving forward engaging on shared priorities under their association agreement, which was signed in 2001 and entered into force in 2004. The association agreement established a free trade area FTA between the EU and Egypt by removing tariffs on industrial products and making agricultural products easier to trade. The EU is Egypt's most important trade partner, accounting for 25% of the country's total trade. Bilateral trade in goods has almost tripled since the FTA entered into force, growing from 8.6 billion euros in 2003 to 24. 0.5 billion euros in 2020. Egypt mostly 
exports to the EU fuels and mining products, chemicals and agricultural products. The EU is also the leading investor in Egypt with accumulated investment stock of 38.8 billion euros, representing around 39% of the country's total foreign direct investment. Egypt remains the second biggest recipient of EU FDI in the Middle East and North Africa region. The European Union and Egypt are continuously working on improving trade and investment relations in order to foster mutually beneficial development and growth. Welcome back. You're still watching uh, the Daily Debate. Uh, Dr. Sharif Amir, as we did see in uh, the past report, mm -hmm. uh, the bilateral relations between Egypt and uh, the European uh, Union mm -hmm. over uh, decades of uh, cooperation and development. How do you think uh, those bilateral relations have developed over the past uh, 10 years? Uh, as we said at the beginning, uh, yes. the, the relations with the EU was very tense because yes. they didn't accept Egypt's path towards democracy and this was um, for two reasons the the think tanks they have in the west used to um, I, I, I lived that uh, there at that time in the academic field and they used to tell the people there that uh, they give reports and the think tanks that uh, um, Egypt um, this what happened to Egypt is not a democratic choice and mm. all that so it was false information Add to that the mainstream media, it was also against us. So uh, we had to rebuild our public relations again. Yes. We had to speak about ourselves again. We never forget also the, the help of our friends and brothers in the, in the Gulf states. They helped us in that. But Egypt had to do it also by itself. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the EU uh, was measuring and balancing several things. They want a stable country in the Middle East. No one was, st was stable at that time except mm -hmm. Egypt. They wanted a, a reliable ally who would not blackmail them, like it happened with Turkey. It was Egypt. They wanted a country which will preserve the calm between the Israelis and the Palestinians. It was Egypt. So um, they started to think that, why not? accepting the vision of the Egyptian people. Why not listen to the, 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 the leadership in Egypt? Why not to invest in Egypt? Mm -hmm. And they started, Germany started by that, and the, the British. And then we have seen the Rafale sent to Egypt. It, they never sell these arms, sophisticated arms, to countries who are uh, not welcomed in their, so they welcomed us at yes. that time. This was positive signs. And there was a huge, huge, problem for the Europeans, it was the illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. Boats were flooding from Libya, from Syria, from everywhere towards Europe, towards Italy. And Italy used to, to push them to France and France pushed them back to Italy. It was a chaos mm -hmm. inside the EU. Egypt had a strong navy and we have a, the, the best navy in the Mediterranean now. We defended all these uh, interests. We told them we will work together under one condition respect Egypt's sovereignty and this is what happened and then the relations began to develop. Mm -hmm. Yes uh, and finally how do you see the fields of uh, cooperation for the future as we have spoken about the achievements that we have had internally mm -hmm. and externally more specifically about the foreign policy file under uh, the, uh, His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and mm -hmm. Foreign Minister Samah Shukri ever since 2014. How do you see the next 10 years in terms of uh, cooperation with the European Union, with the African continent, and for the rest of the world in this file in general? Well, we, we are witnessing now uh, the, the dollarization, as people are um, calling like that. The dollar now is being uh, fragile because many uh, are seeking to make uh, deals, many countries, with their own currencies. Mm like the, the yuan, uh, the ch Chinese yuan and yes. the, uh, the Russian ruble. Uh, and people are trying to, investors trying to flee this uh, pressure of the dollar. I think this would change tremendously the relations, international relations. Mm -hmm. Once we will be free from one currency, we will have our own uh, freedom to trade with our own currencies. Mm -hmm. 
this will change many things. I think Europe will, uh, Western Europe, of course, will um, get to the conclusion that a country like Egypt, who stated that we have to be, be balanced and have a position clear about the conflict now, this was the right thing to do because they are losing a lot econom economically. And we are, doing, we are losing also, but because we are all in the same bo boat, mm -hmm. but we have the right vision. Endorsing war is not an option. Yes, uh, Dr. Sharif Amir, the Professor of Geopolitical Affairs and uh, the International Relations, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Anytime. And this brings us to the end of uh, the daily debate for tonight. I will be leaving you, however, with the latest uh, presidential activities of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in the past week in the upcoming report. Thank you for watching and goodbye. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received a phone call from the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Ahmed Fahmi's spokesperson for the presidency stated the call dealt with ways to enhance the distinguished bilateral relations between Egypt and Germany in all fields. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received a phone call from Mrs. Giorgia Meloni, Prime Minister of Italy. Ahmed Fahmi, spokesperson for the presidency, stated the call included mutual praise for the historically distinguished relations between the two friendly countries, in addition to the existing cooperation to address many challenges in the Mediterranean region. Egypt followed with great interest the results of the presidential elections in the sister country of Sierra Leone, which resulted in President Julius Madabayo winning a second presidential term. In this regard, Egypt congratulated His Excellency on his re-election as the president of Sierra Leone following an electoral process that reflects the level of awareness of the brotherly Sierra Leonean people and affirms its support for His Excellency in continuing work to achieve the aspirations and hopes of his people. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi held a phone call with the Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Ahmed Fahmi, spokesperson for the presidency, stated that President congratulated the Greek Prime Minister on the great electoral victory achieved by the ruling party in the parliamentary elections that took place last June.